New models from Porsche are not something that come along every day. So it's not surprising that this, the first totally new Porsche for almost two decades, the Boxster, is a car that just everyone wants to get their hands on. The thing with the Boxster is that it has an awful lot to live up to. I mean, sibling rivalry doesn't get much fiercer than when your big brother is the 911. But the Boxster has managed to rise to the challenge beautifully. But don't kid yourself, you're not paying 60 grand, so you certainly won't get the thrills and power by the bootful that you would behind the wheel of a 911. But what you do get is Porsche's own new two and a half litre six cylinder engine that even though it's water cooled will still give you the kind of performance that drivers dream about. It certainly won't disappoint with a top speed of 150 miles per hour and 0 to 60 in just under seven seconds. The sound that comes out from the engine is absolutely wonderful and the tune from the centrally positioned tailpipe is the car industry's equivalent of an Oasis number no. one. The engine really is incredibly smooth and the gear change snappy and again also very smooth. The Boxster is a car you can have great fun in, safe in the knowledge that you are in a rear wheel drive dream that corners beautifully with astonishing grip and also manages to feel secure and reassuring. The power assisted steering is very direct and the brakes are developed from Porsche's motorsport programs. They're extremely powerful, stopping the Boxster from 60 miles per hour to zero in just 2.7 seconds. I can't show you the stunning flat six engine because it's mid-mounted, hidden away here between the cabin and the rear boot, safely tucked away from all but the hands of the most experienced and expensive Porsche mechanics. Here in the boot is the only bit that you and I can get our hands on. This small service area, simple, just the way I like my car's engines to be. So if this doesn't house the engine, then what does live here? Let's take a look. Well, you've got the spare and plenty of storage space. Something else that puts the Boxster well above its rivals. There are just two models in the Boxster's range. There's this, the five-speed manual, and for £2,600 extra, you can go for the Tiptronic version, which uses Formula One-style buttons on the steering wheel. Just perfect for those wannabe Villeneuves to fantasise with. The Boxster may well ooze precision German engineering and performance, but you know, it's not exactly back of the class when it comes to style. Designed to evoke memories of classic Porsches from years gone by, the Boxster turns heads wherever it goes. The styling is so strong and it has such fantastic pose value that even my granny wanted to be taken for a spin in it. The Boxster is also one of the rare breed of soft tops that looks just as good with the hood up as it does down. And what a hood it is. In just 12 seconds, you're sheltered from the elements, making the Boxsters the fastest hood in the business.
Boxster manages to combine classic Porsche features with modern day style and the interior is no different. In keeping with Porsche's tradition, the ignition is on the outer side of the steering wheel here. And that's a throwback to the early Le Mans days, when the drivers had to sprint to their cars from the edge of the track. Having the ignition here made it faster and easier for them to start. The overall interior layout looks great and features in prominent position, of course, the rev counter, which also includes, in a concession to the 90s, an analogue speedo. But the Boxster has made it slightly more of an affordable dream. On £34,000, it may well be half the price of its stable mate, the 911, but that's still an awful lot of pennies. But if you've set your heart on one day owning a Porsche, and nothing but that badge on the bonnet is good enough for you, then cancel your holiday, stay in for the foreseeable future, and put your name on the waiting list, because this is a car that I promise you will put you in driving heaven. This one was worth waiting for. It's the first genuinely new Porsche for 18 years, and it's a real bargain at a mere £35,000. But it's unmestakably 100% pure Porsche, a real porky with classic design cues and styling that's as good as the 911s. And who better to tell us more than Porsche's chief designer? Starting off with a clean sheet of paper for us designers is, of course, the ideal uh, start for such a project. Uh, we from the design department of Porsche always have loved to do such a car. So when the project started, we actually had quite a lot of ideas up our sleeve and uh, therefore we were uh, quite prepared to do the Boxster. What was the idea in mind? Obviously you'd, you'd completely blown out the idea of having this as a four-seater, a two plus two. It's strictly a two-seater roadster. I mean, yes. who, who do you have in mind? Do you sit there with your ideal customer, your, your ideal prospective buyer in mind when you sit down and pen a car like this? No, it's, um, it's based on our strategy uh, that we will have two sports cars in our range. Uh, one with a mid-engined uh, layout and one with a rear-engined layout. And uh, the one with the mid-engined layout is the one in which I'm sitting right now, the Boxster, with um, a pretty much a, a very exciting uh, interior, as you can see, where we, uh, uh, we brought in some, some new design features uh, based around some very traditional and strong uh, features of which Porsche is so well known of, like the instruments, as you see here. The instruments on the 911 play a, a very important role uh, in its interior design. And as you see on the Boxster, uh, this is uh, a new interpretation. The three instruments uh, which the Boxster has are uh, moved into each other, so you can see them uh, very well, you can read them very well through the steering wheel. In the past it's been a complaint of some people that uh, 911, Porsche 911 interiors are almost agricultural. I mean this is very deliberately though much more 1990s isn't it? Still though I've got to say and I congratulate you on it with that Porsche feel it's unmistakably a Porsche in inside although it's chalk and cheese really compared with the 911. Yes. Um... A design evolution of the 911 interior was actually executed in the 924, 944 and 968 models. Um, that evolution um, has not been that strong that people saw it as the big step. Therefore, on the, the Boxster we did a, 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 larger, uh, a, a, a larger evolution and we brought in some new themes which uh, will still be very modern in a lot of years from now. 
The other point is, of course, that although it's unmistakably Porsche from the outside, although it's un unmistakably new, it could never be mistaken for another version of the 911. It's ob very obviously a Porsche, very obviously not the 911, yeah. but it's still got those Porsche traits. I mean, that's oh, yeah. the art of it, isn't it? Yes, that's the art uh, which we think we uh, are very good in doing. And um, as I said before, it's very, diff it's very important to, uh, to find a design theme which is still going to be modern in eight or even ten years from now. And of course the other point is that it, would, it could still look almost somehow just as stunning 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. If you think of something like a Porsche 356, still stunningly attractive and somehow yes. a modern icon almost. What you can see uh, clearly here, this is actually the uh, operated uh, version uh, fitted with a lot of parts from our so-called exclusive uh, program and as you can see uh, many parts have been uh, operate, uh, operated in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in terms of uh, visual uh, impact or tactile uh, impact and uh, this interior is made in such a way that we can replace uh, particular parts in the future and um, uh, for instance here you can see the instrument binnacle with its, uh, its lovely bridge uh, over it um, making it even uh, lighter looking by having this air slot uh, above the instruments you can clearly see that this instrument uh, cluster could actually be changed in a couple of years from now if necessary also other parts are uh, shown and which are based on the same design concept are the, the middle console, uh, the door panels. Uh, we can see uh, steps, ev design evolutionary steps being executed in, this, in these areas uh, in the next years. Uh, if I had £35,000 to spend, do you think it might be a wise bet to actually get one of these, seal it up in a large cellophane bag and maybe keep it in a garage for 20, 30 years, wheel it out in three decades time and become a millionaire? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think um, you should buy it as uh, soon as you can, uh, enjoy it as much as you can and uh, as it is because I think in many respects uh, from a design point of view, from a technical point of view, it's, uh, it's miles ahead of the, uh, of the competition and uh, therefore uh, why not enjoy it at this moment? What you're looking at here is a classic of today and the future. The great thing about this car is that it's relatively cheap. For the price of one 911 you can buy a Boxster for yourself and another Boxster for the wife the mistress, your mum, your own parents. Well, I'm one of those people that said that the old shape 911 that was recently replaced was the best car in the world, pure and simple. The new look 911, I'm not too sure about. There's something not quite right about a front-engined, water-cooled Porsche. But I have to say, the new 911 Cabrio is just absolutely stunning. Can there possibly be a more desirable convertible car in the world than this? For my money, absolutely not. And it's £75,000. Yes, a hell of a lot of money, something I'll never be able to afford for a car. But I tell you something, against the Ferraris, Lamborghinis and other supercars out there, seems like a bargain to me and it's money in the bank. Get your hands on one of these cars and they're going to be available sooner than you might think. They're going on sale in Britain very, very soon. I would guess that in the early days at least, this car will actually sell for a premium. So much for the old adage that the moment you drive a car off the forecourt, you lose money. Get your hands on one of those and you'll probably make money from day one. Well, I always said the best car in the world was the old shape, air-cooled Porsche 911. What have they gone and done? Well, they've introduced a new model. It's bigger, it's more powerful. This time it's water-cooled, it's longer. It'll accommodate four people in, they say, luxury. The question is, does this inherit the title of greatest new car in the world? Well, the previous 911 was, for my money, the best car in the world. The question is, is the new shape 911 even better? <laughs> Thank you.
Well, to me, one of the most important things about any car is the interior design, which is as important, if not more so, than the exterior. And I've got to say, the interior of the new 911 is, um, well, functional. Uh, it's a vast, vast improvement on the old shape 911. Now, some of it I don't like, these horrible little shiny switches here. They're very, very tacky. Not, uh, not quite what you'd expect from a 65,000 pound supercar like this. But the instrumentation is just an absolute joy. You've got right smack bang in the middle there, the rev counter. That's what you look at, smack bang between the eyes. The speedometer is off to the left and there's all sorts of other dials and uh, information there as well. It's all there in that nice cluster. A very nice touch also is below the rev counter, you've got a digital readout of your speed as well. So you've got a traditional old uh, analog readout and a digital as well. And uh, yeah, that works, that works well. As for the driving experience, well, what would you expect? We are talking about one of the world's most famous supercars. We are talking about a car that cost 65,000 pounds. Let's get that in a context for a minute. You could buy three BMW Z3s for the price of one of these cars. And of course it's a great car to drive, although, you know, it's amazing how much time you do spend on very, very straight motorways like this one. It has to be said motorways with a not very good road surface. And uh, you just cannot get any fun out of this car at all. You might as well be in in any old motor driving in a straight line. There are perilously few open country roads. We're here on a Sunday morning trying to, to, to find the open road and it's, it's pretty damn difficult. One of the big disappointments for me about the new 911 is the noise or lack of noise. Let me put it like this. One of the joys of the old shape 911, the previous generation model, was when you fired up that six cylinder air-cooled engine, you almost didn't need to go anywhere. You just were happy to fire up the engine and sit and listen to it tick over. With the new one, the water-cooled 3-litre, 300-horsepower engine in this car, well, it's a different story. You fire it up and it sounds like any other sort of Japanese car or any other tame sports car on the market. What I'm really saying is I miss desperately that throbbing, that luscious engine note of the old 911. And I think anybody who longs for a 911 for that reason and that reason alone well, this isn't the car for you, it's the previous generation model that you should go for. It was often said that the old shape 911 was tail happy and it was very easy to lose, very easy to throw the back out and go flying off the road. I never found it half as bad as people said it was, but yeah, they did have a point and uh, you could easily swap ends in that car if you didn't treat it with the respect that it deserves. That's the point with a car like this. Yes, you could do something very silly and have an accident very, very easily, but if you just get into the thing, and bear in mind, this is not a poser's car. This is a beautifully engineered, almost race car for the road. It will do 175 miles per hour, for God's sake. It's got 300 brake horsepower. There's an awful lot of grunt contained within this very small car, and you could get into a lot of trouble, but you'd have to be a very, very silly boy or girl to get out of shape in this one, because I've been chucking it around on a, on a private airfield, actually, almost trying to invite it to catch me out. What a day. That's the way to spend your Sunday, in the new Porsche 911. I mean, it was no posing down the pub or going around to see my mates to show off. It was just out on those country roads and a few motorways, unfortunately, where it's not so much fun, but really, what a car. I mean, a great car, but it should be a great car. We're talking about a lot of money, 65,000 pounds, but we're also talking about 300 horsepower, 
3.6 litre engine. It will hurl you to, from 0 to 60 in just over five seconds. And not that we ever got anything close to these speeds today, but it, it does have on paper a top speed of 175 miles an hour. Not that you'd ever want to do anything like that on public roads. All you want to do on public roads with a car like this is just enjoy the experience. Somehow it's almost as much fun pootling along at low speeds as it is doing the, the thing that you should be doing in this car and that's hurling it round corners and boy does it go around corners. It just sticks to the road as if the thing is on rails. I've got a few doubts though about it. I keep coming back to this question of noise. It doesn't make the right noises for me. I prefer the old air-cooled engine in terms of the satisfaction to the ear. In terms of satisfaction in driving, well, this is a better driver's car. That uh, water-cooled engine is just absolutely glorious and uh, those Porsche engineers must be the best in the world at what they do. Remember, this is a very expensive car, but it, we have to see that price in context. This is a car that will be worth approximately 55% of its original value in three years time after 30, 36,000 miles, you'll get more than half your money back. So it's a lot of money to shell out, but it holds its price well on the used car market. Is it the best car in the world? Well, I, to be honest, I still can't quite make up my mind on that one. I said that the old shape 911 was for my money, the best car in the world when it was around. It is no longer around. This is its replacement. I can't honestly say this is my number one choice for a new car at the moment. That's the bad news for Porsche. The good news is, if I was going out tomorrow to buy a car, my money would go on what I now consider in 1998 to be the best car on the market. And that is the humble Porsche Boxster, a car that costs precisely half as much as this.